on NBC. Live from New York, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guests tonight are Woody Allen, William Walker, Gila Golan, Chriswell, The Muppets, and live visits to Times Square, welcoming in the New Year. We have Mr. Woody Allen, we have William Walker, Gila Golan, we have Criswell. We'll be here prognosticating for us tonight. Really? Yes, it's going to predict. <laughs> the Muppets are with us, so it looks like a great show. Thanks for dropping by, and we'll be right with you in a second. We thought, what? <laughs> no, no, I'm just thinking. We thought tonight, since the new year is only about 17, 18 minutes away, and we invited a gentleman who has been with us before. He, uh, he always entertains us with some of his startling predictions. So we thought we would get a jump on everybody and find out what Criswell will predict for 1966. Would you welcome Criswell? Well, uh, a happy new year to you, Criswell. It is a great honor again to be with you and all of your friends on New Year's Eve of 1965. And I'd like to say greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives, whether we want to or not. Well, that's... You can't argue with that. <laughs> my first prediction is that I predict that the year of 1966 will be a year of tricks. Deceit and Deception, 1966. He knows. Yeah, he knows. And I our first target has been working on his expense account already. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a bad, bad year. Uh, excuse me, I don't mean that. That's why I interrupt here. I further predict that many executives will go on strike in protest against the many new union regulations. Well, what kind of executive? Just executives in general? The average executive, yes. Have our NBC executives gone on? No. no. They were protesting last week, remember? They, were they? They burned their washroom keys. Oh, yes, I did. I predict a family coat of arms will be the new fad in America. Yes, a new family American pride in your own personal family right here in America. And the family coat of arms will be your number one fad for 1966. That's interesting. You have a coat of arms? No, I, I, I have one. I'm not aware of it. I, but I'm going to get one tomorrow. <laughs> it would be better if you want to, you know, come out right. I predict a dude and a nude ranch will open somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> a dude and a nu nude ranch. That's right. Somewhere in the Midwest. And I'll lay odds you won't hear a discouraging word either. <laughs> I predict that 10,000 doctors will refuse to practice under Medicare and be replaced by doctors trained by the Pentagon. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. I predict that the slowest races of all times at the Olympics in Mexico City, due to the difficulty of breathing in that high altitude. Well, that, now that, that makes sense. Remember, you were... Yes, I... Ed was in Tijuana once and had difficulty breathing. I remember. <laughs> and here is a rather long-range prediction because I predict that in 1976, people will no longer be buried due to a shortage of land. In fact, there will practically be no more land left anywhere. And I predict that these people will be cremated and placed in compressed, placed compressed in tiny cubes about the size of dice. That's really crapping out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
I predict that within two years, there will be the discovery of people living inside the Earth at the North Pole. Didn't somebody write a book years ago uh, with, that, with that theory or something, that there were people... Admiral Byrd, yes. And it will be proven in this year. No, there was a book written. Yes. Uh, Definitely. About Byrd had made a discovery That's because right. they saw vegetation up at that part okay. of the country and that there is supposed to be an opening in the up around there and people actually live inside That's the right. earth. A, a whole racial strain completely disappeared in North America and that is exactly where they think they have gone, beneath the North Pole. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I predict that America will reach the highest point of prosperity in March of 1966. And I predict a woman's professional football team next season. <laughs> <laughs> the Cleveland Beiges. <laughs> In fact, I stake my professional reputation on that very prediction. Well, that's going out on a limb. <laughs> I predict. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh. You know. I predict that rings in the nose will come into fashion in 1966. Well, have you seen men wearing rings already in their ears? Aren't oh, they? yes. So, uh, is this for men or women or both? Both. I regret to predict an invasion of flying cockroaches on the West Coast. <laughs> Aren't we going out there in March? Yes. yes. <laughs> Our show is going out. That's probably what you have yeah. in mind. Uh. <laughs> We're flying out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I predict that hotels and motels will install television sets with tow control. Toe. With toe, with your toe. Control. Save time, I guess. <laughs> I predict they will discover that one of the five great lakes is slowly emptying out and will dry up completely. Well, now that would, really, that would yeah. be a big problem, wouldn't it? Sure would. You don't want to take a... can't mention the name. No, I can't oh. mention the lake. Oh. But actually, it is slowly emptying out. And I predict in the field of science and nutrition, there will be three new wonder foods. Number one, it is a food that will make people honest. Number two, it will be a food to make you forget. And number three, there will be a food to make people more considerate of each other. And now, due to many experiments, of course, when rats eat this type of food, the rats have a better memory. Well, they've already tried this out. Oh, yes. It's oh. definitely, it's off the drawing boards. It's in to practice at the present time. A rat that has a better memory. Hmm. What's a rat got to remember? <laughs> well, I mean, I could, I wasn't, you know, didn't want to medically examine it, but... And now, I'd like to fearlessly predict the most exciting event to come in 1966. I predict there will be an American on the moon, a 20th century Columbus of outer space in our very own time. Now, I'll applaud, I'll more for that one. Well, Chris Will, I thank you for being with us again. Thank you very much. I'll look forward to those predictions. And I hope to see you in California. We'll see you out there in a couple of months. Thank you very much. Now, for antiseptic throat aids, here's Ed, who's an authority on three-way action. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as to say that, John. I'm not an authority on three-way action, but F and F, the folks that make F and F, and of course the antiseptic throat aids, they are authority on the three-way action that you want when you're suffering from painful minor sore throat pain. When you have a raspy, rugged throat and it hurts, well, that's 
why there's salicylamide in antiseptic throat aids to soothe painful throat membranes. That's why there's Banacol to kill millions of germs on contact. And that's why there's Terpenhydrate to relieve congestion. Relief? Yes. And pleasant tasting, too. You'll like the cool flavor of antisept throat aids as they dissolve in your throat. Now, remember, for a cold, follow whatever advice you think best. Rest, aspirin, or a cold capsule. But for the miserable sore throat that you have, get soothing relief with antisept throat aids. Brought to you by the folks who make F&F &F cough lozenges, which also contain germ-killing Banacol.